Hi everybody, okay, welcome back. We're looking today at the subject of deponent verbs. We're in Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek, chapter 8, section 1, although we're not really in that section. This is the video that I promised in the previous video in which I said I would give a fuller explanation of what deponent verbs really are, something that's not really necessary at this stage of the course, but might be of interest to you anyway. So if you're not a grammar junkie, then you are more than free just to skip onto the next video into section 8.2. And this won't impair your progress through the book at all. But if you are a grammar junkie, or if you're just interested, or have got a bit of time on your hands, then stick with us. I'm going to give you a fuller explanation of what deponent verbs are. In order to understand what a deponent verb is, we need to understand first the idea of voice in verbs. You're familiar, probably, with the distinction between active and passive voice in verbs. We have this distinction in English. All of the verbs you've learned so far, verbs like luo, are in the active voice. Active verbs are verbs in which the action is done by the subject of the action. So, luo, I untie, as in untie a donkey or something. I'm not the one being untied, I'm the one doing the untying. The subject does the action. However, passive verbs, verbs in the passive voice, it's the other way around. In, with passive verbs, the verb is done to that the action of the verb is done to the subject rather than by the subject. So the easiest example I think of in English is the verb to hit, right? If I hit a punch bag, I hit a punch bag, that means I'm actively, so to speak, acting upon something else. So that's in the active voice. But if I hit the punch bag and then the punch bag swings back, I am hit by the punch bag. I am hit by the punch bag. I am hit, that's a passive verb in English, because I, the subject, have the action done to me, not by me. So there's a distinction between active and passive first. Active, the subject does the action. Passive, the action is done to the subject. Right, or done upon the subject, or the action terminates upon the subject in some way. Right. So what of the middle voice then? Well, here's where the crunch comes. In English, we don't really think of the middle voice in uh, those kind of concrete terms. It's not, it doesn't really feature in English as such with a distinct set of meanings. And it doesn't really that much in New Testament Greek either. More on that in a second. But in ancient classical Greek, the middle voice was a distinct voice and had a distinct set of meanings. Specifically, the middle voice was used in three instances. It was used when a verb which could normally be used transitively was used intransitively. Or it was used when a verb was used causatively or reflexively. So, normally transitive but intransitive, middle voice. Causative, middle voice. Reflexive middle voice. Let me give you examples of each of them. A verb that might normally be used transitively is the verb to wake. I wake my kids in the morning. Come on, get up kids. I wake my kids. The verb is wake. The action is done by me, the subject. I wake and it terminates upon my kids. They're the object. I wake my kids. However, we could use the same verb in a, the sense which implies that I'm the one who's waking. Like this. I woke at 6am. I woke. It's not a passive verb. It's not saying that, that uh, it, the action was done by somebody else to me, but it's not a transitive verb either. It's a verb that's normally used transitively, I woke my kids, but is being used intransitively, I woke, no object. In ancient Classical Greek, that will be in the middle voice. That's the first example. Second example, can't remember which way around to put these, but reflexive or causative. Those are easy. Um, if I said, uh, I fed my dog, that's active. I don't have a dog, but I fed my kids, <laughs> active. I was fed by my kids, passive. I fed myself, reflexive. I'm doing the action to myself. That will be in the middle voice in classical Greek. So, reflexive, intransitive when it's normally transitive, causative. Uh, here, the, the classic example which I've seen in classical Greek texts is something like Hadrian built the wall. Consider the difference between Hadrian built the wall and Steve built the wall. If 
Steve built the wall. Steve is the one actually picking up bricks and mortar and slapping it on and making this wonky wall structure. I'm the one doing the action. But when we say Hadrian built the wall, we certainly do not mean that the Emperor Hadrian got on his hands and knees with a pile of bricks and mortar. What we mean is that Hadrian, strictly speaking, caused the wall to be built. In classical Greek, such a statement, um, obviously some predating Hadrian, but such a statement would go in the middle voice, because it's causative. Right, so there you've got so far, you know what the active voice is used for, you're familiar with that passive voice, you're probably familiar with that from other things. The middle voice, um, that's when verbs are normally used transitively, but are used intransitively, middle voice, or when they're used reflexively or causatively in classical Greek. Right, with me so far? So what happens between the classical era and the New Testament era? What happens is really very interesting. The middle voice stops being used so frequently for those kinds of actions. Instead, they just get put in the active voice or the passive voice or people find some other way of saying it. And that means that the middle voice kind of isn't doing anything. So what is the middle voice used for? Well, in New Testament Greek, it turns out that there are some verbs that do have a middle voice form and they do have a passive voice form, but they don't come in the active voice form. There just isn't an active form of the verb. And a verb such as ruamai, ruamai, is an example of that. That comes in the middle voice. It actually comes in the passive voice as well. I won't bother you with what the endings and so on are for that at this stage. But there is no active voice form of the verb ruamai. You can't say ruo. If you write ruo, that's not a word. Right? You're not allowed to say that. You can't do it. So the question then arises, well, what do you do if you want to say a sentence like, I rescue someone? I rescue someone. Well, the answer is you use the middle voice form with an active meaning. Or more properly, actually, the form of the middle voice verb has an active meaning. Now can you see what's going on? Uh, you saw at the start of chapter 8 that a deponent verb was kind of defined as a verb which was Middle voice, but active in meaning. Oh, I'm saying that. Hold on. I'm not, that isn't what it's... Um, it's right at the start of chapter 8. Forgive me. It's a little bit later in chapter 8. Section 8.1.4, I think. That's right, yeah. It, it says something along those lines. Really, the aim of this is to elaborate that for you. A deponent verb, what deponent means is this. It's a, a verb which doesn't come in the active voice only comes in the middle voice and therefore if you want to say it with an active meaning you use the middle form except that even that isn't quite the whole story because it's not just middle voice verbs which are sometimes deponent strictly speaking you can also have passive deponents as well there are some verbs which don't come in the active voice, but they do come in the passive voice. And when you want to say a verb that's active in meaning, you use this form of the verb. Such verbs are called passive deponents. So these ones are called middle deponents or deponent middles. These ones are called passive deponents. And you'll get to, there are four of them basically in New Testament Greek, maybe there's a couple more, but there's only four that are used with any regularity, if I recall correctly. Passive deponents are passive in form, active in meaning. So when you're thinking about deponents, you've got that little history lesson going on there. What deponent means, it uh, has the meaning of an active voice verb, but the actual form comes from one of the other voices. Now, the rabbit hole goes even deeper, uh, and I'm not going to get into this here. But suffice it to say that there is even debate among grammarians about whether we ought to consider some of, some of the deponent um, verbs as 
still proper middle voice verbs. They don't have quite the same obvious active transitive characteristics that standard active verbs have, like luo, I untie the donkey. That is way beyond what we're looking at here. For now, you've already had in this video more than you need to carry on uh, into the next chapter. You stuck with it this far, and I'm proud of you for doing so. We're going to plow onto section 8.2 next. Well done for sticking with this, uh, and keep working at the Greek, working at vocab 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, and we will have you reading the New Testament in Greek in no time at all. God bless, and bye for now.